David Moyes has been fired as the coach of Manchester United. You played for him at yeah. Everton. What was your experience like with Moyes? I love David Moyes, um, not only as a manager, but as a person. He was very good to me, brought me to Everton, and I was very hopeful that he would do well at Manchester United. Um, it's sad to see that he didn't get a little more time, but that's the way the world works these days, and I'm sure he'll fall on his feet and do well. Did he deserve to be fired? That's not my choice uh, to make, but uh, I think it would have been nice to give him a little more time. He inherited a group of players that weren't his own, so that's always difficult. Um, I think over time when he was at Everton, he showed that he's capable of putting a winning team on the field. But that's the way it goes. Um, that's life, and that's an unfortunate part of coaching. Who could fill the role as manager of Manchester United, because clearly the shadow of Sir Alex Ferguson still casts very long there. Well, it's always going to be a difficult task, right, following Sir Alex and, and everything he meant to that club. Who knows? I mean, it'll be interesting to see what kind of manager they bring in. Um, I think, generally speaking, when clubs in any sport make a change like this, you tend to go the opposite of what you had. So um, we'll see what they do. Um, someone's got some interesting decisions to make. Would you ever try to recruit David Moyes over to the major to Major League Soccer? I would love to have him here. Um, we have a fantastic coach in LA with Bruce, um, so probably wouldn't be in LA. But um, he's a terrific manager. I know he loves America. He he often traveled to America for preseason with Everton and with other teams. So you never know. Perhaps for David Beckham's new franchise. Quite the quite the link you're making there. You're what, starting rumors now. Would that would that work? It would work, but um, you'd have to ask Mr. Beckham about that. How much would it take for you to leave LA and go play for Beckham? Uh, well, David's got some deep pockets, and I'm sure his <laughs> owners do. So we'll see. <laughs> so there'd be a lot of zeros. Hopefully, <laughs> just not at the front of the number. Hopefully. No, we're looking at Clint Dempsey type money, right? That would work. The expectations in 2010 in the World Cup, I think, were, were low, and the team exceeded those expectations. What are they now heading into the 2014 World Cup? Uh, I think there's expectations from the fans and people in general who watch, and then there's expectation from the players. We obviously have a very difficult group. Uh, we're very aware of that. But we expect to play three very good games. And... There's no reason why after three games we can't advance out of this group. Um, we know it's difficult, clearly. We know it's not going to be easy, but these are three teams that we will know very well. Uh, Ghana we know very well. Germany we have very intimate understanding of with Jurgen having been the former coach there. And Portugal um, have high quality players all over the field that we know we've played against, watched. So there's no surprises. Um, it's just about us performing the way we can perform and we can do it. The 2010 World Cup ended with the men's national team playing Ghana. Mm -hmm. It will be your first game in 2014. Mm -hmm. How different of a team will Ghana be facing this time around? Well, we're very different. They're also very different. So it'll be interesting, but there's very much a feeling of we need to beat them uh, for a lot of reasons. But obviously those of us who walked off the field in South Africa after that game against Ghana still carry that with us and so uh, this is as important a game as we'll ever play as a national team and we're putting uh, all our eggs in that basket at first and then um, after that we can prepare for Portugal and then Germany. Have you had conversation with Jurgen Klinsmann about what your role is going to be on this men's national team? Uh, we speak uh, quite often um, in campus a little bit out of camp but as far as my role um, my job now is to make the team and I know that very clearly. Um, once we get to camp in May, uh, that's my job along with everyone else's job. It's to make his decision difficult. And so um, if and when that happens, then we go forward from there. But um, it, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be fluid. I mean, he's changed our lineup and changed the way we play many times and guys uh, uh, have to be ready to adapt. For fans of U.S. soccer, it would be impossible to imagine the men's national team without you on it or without you starting. That would be difficult, I think, for a lot of fans. Well, that's the evolution of sports. That's the way sports are. And so um, I understand that to some extent, and that's flattering. But at the end of the day, I have to make the team just like everyone else, and I have to prove that I deserve to be there. And so uh, 
I'll do that. How do you get to that mindset from being the most recognizable U.S. soccer player at one time and now, I would say, and being the face of American soccer for so long? How do you get yourself to the point where you can say, whatever I can do to help the team is fine and not feel like you deserve to be out there and deserve to be starting? Um, well, I'm honest with myself. And so I, I know what I bring. I know that if I'm on the field that I will perform and, and provide the team with what it needs to be successful. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of other guys who are in that same category. And so on a given day, if someone else makes more sense for a certain reason, um, who am I to begrudge that? This game has given me so much. This team has given me so much. I want to be there to support in any way I can. Obviously, I want to play every minute of every game. That's Every player wants that. But if it doesn't work out that way, I'm happy to support the team and hope that we do well. Our poll question for today is asking how far will the U.S. men's national team advance in the 2014 World Cup? So, Landon, I'll ask you to weigh in here. Oh, no. We have our four options. I'm going with D. What I'm would you going like, sir? with E, win the World Cup. <laughs> there you go. How's I like that. that. A right in. We'll, we'll take it. How is your... How has your relationship with the public changed over the last few years? Well, I get, I would say, um, stopped and approached a little bit more than I had previously. I think, I think I forget that what happened in South Africa was such a seminal moment for so many people for a variety of reasons. Um, there's a very emotional connection with people around that moment for whatever the reason was specific to them. Sometimes it was family members, sometimes it was, I've heard people say, you know, that was the last time me and my grandma were together, or me and my grandpa were together, or that was my son and I were hanging out. Or So everyone has an emotional tie to it. So it's really cool that we were able to help provide people with something like that. You're also one goal away from setting the MLS record, becoming the all-time leading scorer in Major League Soccer. What would that achievement mean to you? It means that I've been able to stick it out for a long time and, and stay with it. Uh, it's very difficult to continually produce at a high level for a long time. And so I think that's what I would be most proud of um, when that day comes is that I was able to do it for a long time consistently. For the U.S. men's national team for Major League Soccer, how much longer are you going to play on both of, in both of those leagues and both of those teams? If I knew that answer, I would tell you and it would be out. I don't know that answer. Um, I clearly want to be a part of the World Cup this summer. Um, realistically, being a part of a World Cup in four years doesn't seem viable when some mornings I can barely get out of bed and walk. Um, as far as with the Galaxy, I have a contract for two more years after this year, which I intend on, on playing, and, um, and then we go from there. It seems difficult for people who are fans of soccer to hear you talk like you don't think you're going to make the team. Is there really any doubt that you will not be on the U.S. men's national team this year? Well, it's beyond my control to some extent, right? It's a coach's decision at some extent. But I, I just have to go into camp in May like I always have and prove that I belong. And, um, you know, I've had a, a little bit of a choppy road over the last few years with the U.S. team. I haven't always started. I haven't always played. I haven't always been called in. And so I have to make sure that I'm performing, which is the way it should be. And if I perform well, then I'll be a part of the team. We're heading into summer, and there's one cause that's very dear to your heart that everyone could really use a refresher to think about sunscreen, to think about your skin, to think about how much damage you can incur on your skin through the sun. And that's why you're here today. Yes, it is. Um, a few years back, my dad was diagnosed with skin cancer. and. It's um, sort of a taboo subject to talk about. It's not fun to talk about, but uh, fortunately in my dad's case, he was okay, he caught it early enough, but a lot of people don't. And so the irony of course is that I'm outside in the sun all day, I'm playing outside. So um, a little over a year ago, I was able to partner with the Skin Cancer Foundation and Energizer Personal Care, uh, the people that make uh, Banana Boat and Hawaiian Tropic. And, um, we came up with sort of a fun plan to help educate men who need help being educated. I think as a woman you understand a little more what it's like to take care of your skin, protect yourself, but men are sort of macho about it and don't want to do it. So I would say 80% of my day is just thinking about how to protect my skin well, it's your from aging. Too, yes. right? so, but it's the same for men and it's, um, it can be in a 
narcissistic sort of vain way if you want to take care of your skin, but it's also a safety way for, for all of us too. And I think men are very reluctant to do that. Um, so trying to educate, let people know that this is something that's important. Uh, I'm trying to do my part and hopefully if it saves even one life, then it's worth it.